Andrew, it's Michael and Don. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, how's your winter been so far? I can't complain. It's uh, been nice and warm down here in Florida. Got a nice little break and uh, been working out here, getting ready for the season. Got the itch, itch and ready to go, I guess. Have you uh, reflected at all? Because your first year with the Yankees, you were the closer for the team, and you didn't just have a good year. You were voted the best closer in the American League. How good, now that there's some time separating the end of the season and now, was that season for you? It was a lot of fun. I think, uh, you know, it certainly, you know, I, I pitched probably as well as I possibly could for, you know, a stretch like that. And, you know, hopefully it's something you can still build on, but, you know, I'll, I'll take it. I feel like I did my job and, uh, you know, time and time again. And, you know, it's something that, you know, certainly I felt like I you know, was in a new role. I'd never been the guy as a closer or anything like that to go out there and kind of back it up. I mean, given that opportunity was something I'm certainly proud of, but, you know, I missed a little bit of time. We didn't accomplish our, our, our team goals, but, uh, you know, we got our chance. We got in the playoffs where anything can happen. But at the same time, our goal, you know, I think as any New York Yankee goal is, is to win the World Series. We didn't quite get there. So you have this amazing season, and then they go out and get a closer. So what were your thoughts when that happened? You know, I, that's I'm not the general manager. I, that's uh, Brian Cashman's job. That's, uh, you know, the front office for them to decide. So, you know, I've told them all along I, I came to New York to be a winner, and I think that's uh, – you know, hopefully that's how I'm remembered, you know, as a Yankee at the end of the day. And I think that's probably what the 25 guys on the team will say. Well, Andrew, i got to tell you what. The way you have handled this has been beyond what anybody could do. I mean, you've handled it with such class and grace and said, and as you just said, I'll do whatever we have to do to win. I mean, do you have any ego at all? You know, I think we all do to an extent. But at the same time, you know, there's a time and a place. And, you know, I think for me personally, like I said, I think, you know, at this point in my career, I'm not building any sort of a resume on, on saves. I'm not, you know, I'm not chasing any numbers or records or anything. I, I, I've seen teams win, and I've seen you know how much fun that is. And you know, I truly believe that you know that'll be the most rewarding thing is if, if we win games, if we go out and accomplish our goals, then you know that that'll be the best memories we can make. Yeah. You know, so right now, there are three guys that have the ability to close. So as you go into the season, do you need to know what your role is going to be, or are you pretty much prepared for anything? You know, I think, you know, fortunately for me, I think the way it's been, I, I've had pretty much every role in the bullpen. I've come up, I've been the long guy, I've been the lefty specialist. I've set up and I've closed. And, you know, I think, you know, flexibility is certainly something that will go a long ways with Joe. And I think, you know, hopefully Don and I, I think as things are, are, are planned right now, we'll, you know, be as flexible as possible and, and, you know, be available whenever he asks for us. And, you know, if that helps us win games, I think, you know, that, that's good for us as a team. Andrew, last year the bullpen was a strength. I, I don't think you guys lost a game that you took into the eighth inning with a lead. So that's as good as a bullpen could be. How good could the three of you be uh, in closing out the final three innings of a game, whatever order they use you? Yeah, I think it's, you know, I think, you know, the, some of the stats of, you know, what we accomplished last year were pretty impressive. And I, I'm guessing that the, the goal in all of this is just to, you know, extend that even further. You know, if, if it's not, not the eighth or the seventh, it's now the sixth inning, then, you know, that makes us a better team. And, you know, we had a lot of contributions from guys that aren't getting a lot of, you know, notoriety for it. I think, you know, Shreve was awesome in the beginning part of the year. I think, you know, Justin Wilson, what he did, I think he was far better than his numbers, and his numbers were pretty darn good. So, you know, it's a group effort, and I think, you know, we have a lot of depth. There's some young guys that are coming into camp that showed us a little bit last year, and, you know, hopefully they're all better, and we're even better on top of Adam Chapman. You know, bullpens are always important, Andrew, right? But when you look at the recent champions, the Giants, the Royals, it seems like the bullpen has to be a strength. Do you agree that that maybe isn't number one, but it is just so difficult to excel without an elite bullpen? Yeah, I think it's, I don't know if I'd call it a fad, but it's certainly popular right now. And I think, you know, everybody tends to forget, you know, when I was on that, I was injured the second half, but the Red Sox team that won in 13, how good Koji and Tozawa and, uh, and Breslow were, and, you know, what they did, especially those playoff games where you get the days off and you can throw multiple innings and that kind of stuff and how important that is. And then, you know, I went to Baltimore and I got to, you know, pitch kind of in front of O'Day and, and Britain and, and, you know, how valuable those guys were to that team and, you know, the depth that those those bullpens have that, you know, the teams that accomplish their goals, you know, maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I certainly see there's a ton of value there. Were you surprised, and we're talking with Andrew Miller of the New York Yankees, who's going to receive a Thurman Munson Award uh, next Tuesday at the Grand Hyatt in New York City. Were you surprised that your your old team, the Orioles, actually kept O'Day and kept Chris Davis? Uh, I think not really. I think those guys were so entrenched in the, in the clubhouse culture, and I think they're fan favorites. They're, you know, probably ownership favorites. I know that, you know, Buck is high on them, and 
you know, I think that there's a little extra value there that even though, you know, maybe the Orioles don't tend to play and, you know, that those kind of figures money wise that, you know, they felt like it was worthwhile spending there. And, you know, I think, you know, Darren O'Day is pretty impressive. You don't hear of many uh, relievers, especially guys that aren't closing, being, you know, kind of in leadership roles. And, and he certainly has, has filled that for them. And, you know, I don't blame them for giving him that kind of money. If anything, he deserves more. He's pretty awesome. All right, Andrew, I'm going to stir something up right now. I'm going to ask you a question, see, see, what, see what you think. You started <laughs> your careers as a, a starter. And, you know, the Yankees have a lot of question marks in their starting rotation. It could end up being great. It could end up being a weakness. Would you ever consider starting again? You know, I, I think that's so far away. I, it's, you know, I, I think I pretty much established myself as not a very good starter. <laughs> but, you know, we all tend to think that, you know, I feel like I'm a far better pitcher than I was then. I don't I, I don't know. I don't know what would happen if somebody approached me about that. I, I kind of thought about that in free agency. What if somebody came to me and said, hey, look, well, We'll give you another shot at it. What you know? What what would it be worth to me? And you know, for me, I think I finally found a way to 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 be part of a good team and, and, and help that team win. And, you know, it's harder to break that up. There's too many examples of guys you know trying to do more than they're capable of and are, are getting out of their comfort zone and, and struggling with that. I'm talking to Andrew Miller, the New York Yankees, here on the Michael K Show. You got to play with him a little bit last year. Greg Bird came up and made an impression, and then we learned yesterday he's going to be lost for the year and just your impressions on hearing a young kid like that losing a season you know it, it stinks it, it really does i've been working out with him down here in tampa you know he and i've been the probably the main guys working out with the our strength coach here the last uh, month or so before guys started showing up and i had no idea i couldn't believe it and uh you know i heard the news the way everybody else did and you know, it stinks he came up and did such a great job and you know was so you know embraced by the team i think you know a lot of times young guys you know, kind of timid coming in and whatnot. He came in, you know, he, he fit right in and, and certainly helped us win games. And, you know, hopefully it's one of these deals that it's better for him in the long run, but it's going to hurt us this year. You no, know, we, we mentioned how, how really classy you have handled uh, this this closing situation. Another thing that you've handled very well, uh, Andrew, is that, you know, there were trade rumors. And the Yankees haven't traded you, but, you know, nobody is untouchable. Do you pick up the phone with trepidation each day hoping that you're not traded? <laughs> no, uh, you know what, uh, it's... It's out of my control. I don't have any sort of no trade clause. I've been traded, I don't know, maybe four or five times now. I think four times I've been traded. So it is what it is. I certainly, you know, my intention is to stay with the Yankees. That's, you know, that was part of the the free agent process for me was, you know, trying to find a place that I knew I could settle in and and get used to and, uh, you know, kind of familiarize myself with. But at the same time, it's completely out of my control. I think, uh, you know, everything I've heard from the Yankees, and they seem to back it up, is that it would have to be something pretty extreme for them to move me. And, you know, I don't blame them. I, I think that, you know, if they feel they can make the team, you know, better, that's their prerogative. And, you know, nothing I can do about it to stop it. You're a big football fan. you got a pick for Sunday? You know what? Of the two teams playing, not really. I don't really have a whole lot of – I'll certainly watch. I am a big football fan, but I don't really have a, a pick. I think it's going to be a good game. I think uh, – you know, all the talk is about the quarterbacks, but it's two pretty good defenses. And, uh, you know, it should be fun to watch. But I, I'm not, I certainly don't have a rooting interest, but, uh, you know, just hoping for a good game. Uh, again, just to finish up, Andrew's going to get a, a Thurman Munson Award. Obviously, you just know from what people have told you. What, what does the Munson Award mean to you, Andrew? You know, I, I think anytime you can get recognized, you know, for something you've done in New York or, you know, with the Yankees or anything like that is, you know, quite an accomplishment. So obviously I'm honored. I'm looking forward to it. I've heard great things about the dinner. Uh, you know, I, I've started to do a little bit of research. I, I know who Thurman Munson is, and I certainly have heard a little bit about him. But, you know, he's a little bit, you know, before my generation. But, you know, going through his book and, and checking things out online, and, you know, sounds like a pretty special guy and, you know, obviously an unfortunate tragedy. But, you know, uh, it, it's just pretty uh, – pretty mind-blowing to realize that, you know, being recognized for stuff like this around New York and, you know, just looking forward to getting up there and enjoying a nice dinner. Andrew, I will tell you one thing. One of the great parts of the dinner is getting to meet Thurman's widow, Diana Munson. She's the best, and you will be like, like her best friend by the end of the night. She's that great of a lady. So I can't wait. Yeah. Enjoy the night, and uh, thank you so much for the way you've handled this and coming on with us, and uh, I will see you in a couple of weeks in Tampa. Yeah, look forward to it.